today I'm going to talk, talk about our efforts in Android and KVM QME to bring out the virtualization technology to tablet device. We focused on optimizing IO virtualization and VM memory management for tablet. We run Windows 8.1 in a virtual machine on Android KitKat OS with the add-on tablet. These are screenshots that we take, took on our target tablet. In the first one, Windows OS runs at, uh, is seen in the list of the applications that are currently running on Android. In the second screenshot, uh, no Android notification bar is dragged down to check some message arrival while Windows OS is at current display. As our target hardware spec, we used Baytrail Intel add-on processor and 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of eMMC. For our test, we reduced the host RAM to 3 gigabytes. For virtual machine, we assigned four virtual CPUs, 1 gigabyte of RAM, and 30 gigabytes of virtual disk. On both Android and Windows, it has a 32-bit OS. To run Windows on Android, we had two references. One is a Limbo Android, and another is Intel's talk last year. To briefly introduce them, Lim Limbo Android is a wrapper program to run QEMU on Android. Intel enabled Limbo with KVM support and added some system calls and functions, which is missing in Bionic C. And in further, Samsung rebased Limbo's QEMU version to 1.7, which was the most recent and stable version at the beginning of this year. As we use 32-bit Android kernel, we had to configure its kernel with PAE support so as Windows to be able to use NXBit for its memory management. We enabled the VM to use more than one gigabyte of RAM in the very limited space, in the limited virtual address space in Limbo on 32-bit host. In addition, we virtualized I/O devices that users users would frequently use on tablet devices. Those are multitask, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi access, battery status monitoring, audio, and 2D, 3D graphics rendering. To overcome the slow speed of VGA emulation, we had an approach of a forwarding graphics API from guest VM to host, host machine. But there is a still missing part. It is that Windows runs, an, runs as an application on Android. According to some survey, users will wait five seconds at most for loading applications. Putting Windows VM may take a minute, and this doesn't meet user expectation. For, for this, we had an approach of starting of a virtual machine with a snapshot image. Another is when Android is low on memory, it kills an application in background with the heaviest memory usage first. <clears throat> that means when VM goes in background, it will be the number one target to be killed. As a, uh, as a solution, we utilize the automatic memory ballooning to reserve free memory space for host apps and take a snapshot when VM is get killed by Android and resume from that state later. The last one is virtualized IO devices in QEMU should interface with Android Word to use physical IO devices. I will talk about how we were able to run a virtual machine with uh, around five seconds. We measured the time from initializing QEMU till displaying Metro UI inside Windows. We set automatic login in Windows. It took about 50 seconds in total. Out of 50, 33 was coming from booting Windows, 
12, 12 seconds from automatic login. If there was a major change in configuration in VM or this image was very dirty, uh, it took additional seven seconds. If we take a snapshot and start from it, it took about 10 seconds. And uh, at the time we took the snapshot, the snapshot size was around 580 megabytes. By modifying QEMU properly, we got uh, five seconds. I'll talk about how we, we were able to get uh, four seconds for loading VM snapshot. First, first, we had a separate file to store VM state. We, we are using QCAL2 file for storing virtual disk image. And the, the size of a QCAL2 file had increased more than 15 gigabytes after installing a few applications, including MS Office. The large size of a file causes latency in searching metadata at two layers. One is at QCAL2, looking up the L1 and L2 table. And another one is at the host file system, looking up the block index corresponding to a file offset. Snapshot is large size of a sequentially stored data. Considering its sequential property, we increased, we increased the buffer size of a QEMU file, the QEMU file data structure from 32 kilobyte to 500 kilobyte to access storage at full bandwidth. Additionally, additionally we, had, uh, we added an API to give a reader ahead hint to the virtual block layer. When QCAL2 prepares to load the snapshot, it gives a reader ahead hint with the start offset of a snapshot as well as its size. Internally, it is implemented with app advice function with sequential attribute at raw project's block layer which QCAL2 eventually calls. There was a, they were also changed in the layout of stored RAM state. The, in the upper diagram, it is from existing QEMU. It, except zero pages, each four gigabyte of memories are saved with eight bytes, eight bytes of header together, and sequentially they are sequentially stored. Later on, it is loaded into QEMU buffer first and then copied to VM RAM area. To avoid memory copy overhead, we save the contiguous non-zero pages larger than 500 kilobytes together after a single header and then load it into the VM RAM directly. So using all these features, we were able to save three seconds out of seven seconds for loading snapshot. To reduce the time for initializing QEMU, we disabled the unused, unused virtual device and modules and used the no default option, especially disabling QEMU monitor and QMP socket, we saved one seconds out of three. We also enabled the transparent huge pages with zero pages are disabled. And there is another. We eliminated the redundant function call, which is a QEMU system reset. It is called inside the main right before calling load VM state. Again, it is called inside the load VM state. So we remo removed the first function call. And it worked OK. Now I will talk about our ballooning approach according to the foreground screen display to conform with Android memory management. Current, in current QEMU, the host memory pressure is measured with page reclaim ratio. But as Android has additional memory management policy, we have a different metric. There are two modules which kills Android process when Android is low on memory. One is low memory killer 
at, in kernel, and another is activity manager service at user level. Low memory killer maintains a mean free table, and based, based on this main main mean free table, it kills process. There is an example of mean free table at the bottom of this slide. Mean free table consists of tuples of minimum adjust adjustment value of a victim process and the minimum free memory size. If current free memory is about 90 megabytes, it corresponds to the fifth column. So LMK will inspect processes with adjustment value greater than or equal to nine and find the process with the biggest adjustment value and the largest memory usage. Activity Managed Service and User Level updates each process's adjustment value on every activity change. As well, besides, it tries to keep free memory size and page cache size greater than some of the low watermarks in each memory zone by killing background processes in LRU order. So by listening those two modules via EventFD, balloon backend measures host memory pressure. This is our ballooning policy. We set different level of memory threshold to host and guest according to VM state, either in fo at foreground or background. When VM is at foreground, guest has a higher priority of using memory, so we let VM freely use its memory. We try to keep guest VM memory pressure small. Guest memory pressure is expressed with the memory usage out of total memory, but we don't want to let we don't want to Android to sacrifice important apps for virtual machine, such as visible, perceptible apps and ser services. A, fl a flow of controlling a a balloon, a guest balloon at foreground is shown at the bottom of the diagram. When balloon backend in QAMU detects guest memory pressure, it first to inspects host free memory size. If host memory is enough to keep important apps, then it sends a command to, it sends a deflate command to guest. And then guest balloon driver deflates by freeing its own memory and returning its guest physical page frames that it recently freed to balloon backend. And then Balloon backends gives some uh, memory advice to its host kernel that it, the memory pages will need. When virtual machine is at background, host applications have a higher priority of using memory. So yield the guest memory as much as it can. We try to keep host free memory up to the level that no other background application in, in host doesn't have to be killed. But we don't want to push guest memory pressure too high because it will induce page swap. The flow is the same as the three previous one except that the host memory pressure is received from Android Activity Manager service and low memory killer. This is our experimental result. We set guest virtual machines RAM to one gigabyte and to see the maximum balloon size, we set virtual machines memory pressure at background to 100%. Yellow line is the guest available memory in kilobytes and green is for host free size and the red line is for balloon size. We filled uh, guest memory uses to up to 80% by executing heavy memory usage applications and then switched it to Android Word and started a host application which allocates 
memory by 100 megabytes upon user request. When the host application has reached to allocate, to allocate 300 megabytes, balloon has started inflating. And right after killing the host application, we came back to the win Windows world again because the host memory pressure was very high. It started the deflation right away. Without ballooning, VM was killed at the point that Windows uh, Android host application has allocated 300 megabytes. Now I will talk about how we interfaced Android with QEMU virtual devices. This is the architecture of our newly added virtual devices. We had a modification in BlueDroid and Limbo and QEMU together. To, uh, for the, regarding the Bluetooth, it is virtualized as a USB Bluetooth. And to handle the raw HCI packet at BlueDroid, we had modified BlueDroid. And regarding the multi-touch, we had to add uh, USB, add some modules inside the USB stack as well as QME HID subsystem. And to interface the Android world, we had an Android UI event handler inside QME. And to listen some HID event, we also had modification in Surface View together. And audio is directly interfaced with OpenSL ES. And to, to get the better status monitoring, we added the three objects inside ACPI names, namespace, which is power source, battery, and SMB controller. As, as the, those battery status monitoring is done via SMB SM bus, we had also modification in SM bus. Those are features we got. Regarding HID, multi-touch is virtualized as a USB multi-touch, and mouse three buttons and hover functionalities is also supported, which is missing in Limbo. And Bluetooth is done, uh, virtualized and using HCA, HCA pass-through mechanism. Sound is interfaced with OpenSL and the OpenSL in interface in QEMU maintains a lock-free ring buffer to pass samples to OpenSL. And we also use the synchronous queue processing maintained <coughs> by OpenSL. The ACPI part, I will sc skip this part because I have to explain the, in the previous slide. This is the last one. Um, I'll talk about how, how we were able to assign virtual machine with more than one gigabyte. In the left box, it, this is Limbo's virtual memory address space. Before, Limbo and QEMU assign, runs a virtual machine. The, only the uh, blue dashed lines area is uh, unused. When QEMU tries to reserve a memory space for a guest physical memory, using the mmap function, but without any specific start address, address, it will only get the address space with the right side of blue stripe area. Because it is according to the Android application characteristic, the left, to, le left to area is unused. So we had the explicit mmap and then we, for the rest of the memory area, we call another nmap function. So this is the last, and thank you for listening and questions. Yes? Um, if, so you usually start your Windows guest from a snapshot image. What happens if the guest crashes or for some other reason you need to really reboot it? Do you have to do a slow reboot then? Um, so for that, although I use the separate uh, snapshot file only, uh, we may use the backing file. 
and uh, overlay using by using overlay file, and as the backend file is read only, and uh, as long as we can make sure that previous VM run was not crashed, we can do the block commit from overlay file to base file. But won't the CPU state of the snapshot then be inconsistent with the disk? If you change the configuration in Windows, oh, boot for, so if the uh, the VM was crashed, we have to uh, discard the VM state. But I would expect that would be rarely happen. For that, we need uh, maybe we need another mechanism to make sure that the VM state is okay. Uh, yes. I have a question. Uh, if uh, the user installs application, uh, do you immediately make additional snapshot and uh, resume it in the next stage, or how it is done? Okay, so for clear machine, it's okay. Just mm -hmm. Metro screen, that's okay. But what if user has installed a lot of applications? Yeah, right. So the the point that when we take a snapshot. Um, by running on some agent, and when a user tries to shut down the virtual machine, at that point, all the applications will be shut down. At, at that point, we, make, we can take a snapshot. So we can still keep the small size of snapshot. And we had uh, some several application ran, including the Expo Explorer browser, and including the VGM RAM area, it increased up to around nine, nine, 900 megabytes. Yes? No question? Thank you. Thank you.